Thank you so much for joining us for another in our series of Story to Tell. Today we have with us Mr. Donald George Powell. That's correct? All right. So he will be sharing his journey with us and let, letting us know some of his experiences that he has gone through. Mr. Powell, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you, my brother. Good to have you with us. Are you comfortable? Very much. Very much comfortable. And don't be nervous either. No, like, I just a little, right. a little talking we're doing now. All right? So tell us a little bit about yourself, Mr. Powell. Where were you born? What year? And your parents? Name? Okay, I was born in Glengarth, St. Catherine. Mm -hmm. The year 1952 on the 14th of January. Mm -hmm. my, Powell, the, my father's name is Henry Powell. Mm -hmm. My mother's name is Carmen Powell. Mm -hmm. uh, five brothers and six sisters. Mm. Okay. Fairly big family. Fairly, fairly big family. So all of them is for the, the, the same mother and same no, father? Uh, one sister will not for my father. Mm -hmm. But uh, she have a level after that for my father. Mm. Mm. So what are the your siblings' names? They have Lydie. Mm -hmm. They have Cynthia. Mm -hmm. You have Jasmine, mm -hmm. you have Dolores, mm -hmm. you have Gloria, mm -hmm. you have Pauline, mm -hmm. and you have Andrea. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that uh, the girls. The girls. You have Cleveland, mm -hmm. you have David, mm -hmm. you have Delroy, and you have Glenda. Mm -hmm. and take that cover. And, and, and you. And me. Yeah. So where are you falling in? You're in the middle or are you one of the older ones? First of the last six. First of the last six, so <laughs> kind of in the middle. <laughs> the first of the last six. So how was it growing up in Glengarth? Well, lots of hard work. Mm -hmm. We grew up in the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, my, mom, my dad was a farmer. Mm -hmm. And my mom bring the produce to Kingston. To sell. To sell. And mm -hmm. um, it was very hard work. We have to go to the field to harvest the mm -hmm. crops for them to bring to Kingston. So what? Crops you guys used to do? Yam, mm -hmm. bananas, cane, breadfruit, jelly, coconut, mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. Stangerine, in orange. Yes. So we'd look all of that and my mom bring that to town and said, and that's the main source of income for. Mm -hmm. for so it was a fairly big um, piece of land that you guys were farming? Yeah, more than one piece. More than one piece. Mm -hmm. Uh, one, uh, one we call Hennis, mm -hmm. and uh, where we live, mm -hmm. we have a good amount of land. And then my father now would rent places where we plant yam, mm -hmm. mostly yam and planting. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but we had Hennis, and we had cassava where we live, mm -hmm. and that we plant around the yard and all of that. Mm -hmm. So all the children that they help in the farming are just the Definitely girls, just the boys? Everybody. Even the girls. Everybody. But most of the boys, cause we used to do the climbing to pick the breadfruit, mm -hmm. the jelly. Mm -hmm. um, but the girls would have to wash clean mm -hmm. and then take care of their smaller siblings. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what school? All of us were just uh, one year apart. One year apart? <laughs> so you <laughs> well, live loving, man? Yeah. Well, you know, you have sibling rivalry and mm -hmm. you have usual, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so you've had a fight with any of your brothers? All the while. All the while. <laughs> My God, I can just imagine. All the while. There's a we, lot of uno. We fight and quarrel, but... In the end. In the end. We, we work it out. We work it out. But mm -hmm. yeah, man. So what school you went to? I went to Grateful Primary School. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's what I all did at that time. That's up, up in Glengarth area? Up in there. Glengarth, yeah, mm -hmm. man. Grateful in primary school. At, At that time, you didn't have any secondary school. We had two more school, two primary school. We have Grateful in primary and Cassava were primary. Mm -hmm. So you go either one, the children you go. I went to Grateful in primary school. Mm -hmm. And all of us went to Grateful in primary school. Mm -hmm. Then that's. Yeah. That was it for that us, was it. as far as school is concerned. So when you leave there, you just go and help on the farm? Help on the farm, and then most of us try migrated to Kingston to find jobs. Mm -hmm. So I uh, came to Kingston in somewhere in the early 70s mm -hmm. and worked different, different places. Mm -hmm. That's your first job? The first job, um... When I come to Kingston, I think, but oh, security guard for around four months. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Night in night, you were? Oh, the night. I can't bother with that. I couldn't take the night. Night is for sleeping. Night is for sleeping. Okay. And you can't sleep. The other slogan in the, and the, and the office there, while Nero slept, mm -hmm. Rome burnt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> Serious business that, you know. <laughs> so we could not afford to sleep. But sleep fire, that's how I get fired. Mm -hmm. I think one night, the year you start, the inspector come around. Come ah, sure. You. And when I just wake up to see the flashlight in my face. And I was still on, pro on my probationary period. Mm -hmm. Woke up to see the flashlight in my face, and that was it for me. Oh, my God. Yeah, but I do odd job, different, different places. Mm -hmm. um, still, I finally got a good break mm -hmm. in 1997. Mm -hmm. Again, employment at Kingston Wharf, and that was a turning point for me. Mm -hmm. Why you said it was a turning point? Because right? I could be able to take care of my family. family much was able, better. Much better. I was able to send Kevin, the kids them to school, put Kevin to university. Mm -hmm. was able to take my wife to places I could only dream of. Yes. So that was a turning point for me. So in what capacity you were working at, the, at Kingston? I was a store clerk. Mm -hmm. I, and then after the new company take it, they changed it from store clerk to assistant storekeeper. Mm -hmm. Well, this your parts to mm -hmm. the, the engineer who was working on the crane, the yes. struggle carrier, and the trucks and all of that. So mm -hmm. I was a sto assistant storekeeper. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you oversee the parts and all yeah, of those man. things. Yeah, issue the parts mm -hmm. to the guys that will come at the store for it. Mm -hmm. So that, that was a good job for me. So when you, when you left school, did you do any further training in no. any skill area? No. no. Okay. So do you... You regret not having like another skill could run it back on. Right, right, I regret that. But mm -hmm. definitely, uh, maybe I would be living now if I to even know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could have that too mm -hmm. as an additional mm -hmm. source of source income. Of income. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So tell us now um, how you met your, your wife. <laughs> well, I met my wife first time at my brother's wedding. She was one of the bridesmaids. Mm -hmm. At that time, I wasn't saved. I, I grew up in the trip, but I never mm -hmm. got saved. But after a while, 1977, mm -hmm. I started going to Pentab. Mm -hmm. And I was one day when I sit, I said, she hardly laid I said, who am I going to marry to? I was very friendly, so I was around a lot of ladies. A mm -hmm. lot of ladies. Mm -hmm. From how I was growing up, all my, most of my friends was ladies. Mm -hmm. So when I came to church, most of my friends was the sisters and too. Mm -hmm. But I keep on, what are going to get married? Mm -hmm. So much to choose from. <laughs> yeah. So what were, what were the, the, um, the characteristics you were looking for? Uh, I had a preconceived idea how my wife should be. Mm -hmm. And she's supposed to catch me. She must be taller than you. She wasn't taller than me. Okay. Yeah, if you notice, my wife is taller. Just a little taller than mm -hmm. me. Just a I had a preconceived by there. Mm -hmm. I didn't want anybody who was favoring her. That was. Mm -hmm. mm, so that was my plan. Mm -hmm. But still, you don't know where we're going to fall in. Yes, that is just your idea. That was just idea. my preconceived. She must be shorter than me. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't supposed to have any children yet. Mm -hmm. Um, so what qualities you saw in well, in, in her that you, you think you, that she would have been suitable? She used to work at an as 41. Mm -hmm. And I used to have some friends like uh, Brother White and Michael Brown who used to sell sky juice just across from where she works. Uh, mm -hmm. When I leave work, I'd go and stand up at the chat and we chat sometime. I used to see her over there and she looks so... She had a pleasant, a very pleasant courtness. Mm -hmm. And she had a lovely lady here. Mm -hmm. That time she was young, so it was black. Mm -hmm. And I used to admire her, I used to admire her. But no, I said, not car. Just watching from a distance. Just watching from a distance. Yes, yes. <laughs> watching from a distance. So, and one way there, as she came out, mm -hmm. I saw her walking up the road and I decided to follow her. And uh, went all the way to our friends, mm -hmm. and then I came back down. Mm -hmm. But what sealed it for me now, uh, in 1978, mm -hmm. during the month of Mission Convention, mm -hmm. we had a preacher by the name of Brother Kilgore. Mm -hmm. And we, we spent well, uh, one night at the arena, and this Saturday night, now we had a sing inspiration, mm -hmm. and church was filled to capacity. Yes. And we get, all the men from upstairs get up and line the wall. Mm -hmm. 
And the day and night, it was very rich that night. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, I catch upstairs. Then she was at the balcony at the front. Mm -hmm. And she was under the and night, and her heart fell off. Mm -hmm. And somehow she just looked so angelic. Mm -hmm. And I started to see her to a different lens now. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> anyway, as the rest is history, mm -hmm. made me move on. But that married, no so you, regrets. So you proposed to our um, family and your knee and all of them things? No, well, uh, that was a thing then. <laughs> okay. So um, <laughs> when you went to her and, and tell her about this marriage business, what she say? She was very receptive in her. Mm -hmm. we, it, we, were, we were talking for a while. Mm -hmm. And then we decided that it's time to seal it. Mm -hmm. So uh, first thing I went to Pastor Stewart, mm -hmm. tell her about the sister. We have a talk and then said, we tell the sister to come. Mm -hmm. She went in separate and then they called back both of us. Mm -hmm. and that was it. They were went back again another time under the engagement. That was in 1980. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it. Uh, oh, we wanted to do it 79. Mm -hmm. But it didn't come through, so we did it 5th of July 1980. So did you have to meet her parents before and, and get those things? Yeah, man, I met her mother. She was living with her mother at that time. Mm -hmm. and she knew some of my parents. I took her to the country mm -hmm. to meet my parents. Everybody fell in love with her. Yes, everybody mm -hmm. loved her. Everybody loved her. Okay. Everybody loved her. So you guys got married in um, what year now? 1980. 80. 5th of July. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how was it now living as a young married couple and thing? Things were different or yeah, you have different. a lot of adjustment? Yeah, the first, first time I was living with someone, it was the first time she was living with someone. She lived with her mom all the while. Mm -hmm. When I came to town, I shared her apartment with my brothers until, mm -hmm. just until I, I never lived alone before. So, mm -hmm. moved from my brother's house straight down to the place where I lived when we got married. Mm -hmm. I never took much adjustment. She mm -hmm. was working, I was working. Yes. And, uh, you know, okay. She came home, we started. She, we, we, I didn't depend on her to, she's the lady, so she had to do the cooking. And yeah, that, uh, the chipping and uh, help out. I do my part, up until this day. Up until I'm this day. I'm still cooking. That is good, that is good. <laughs> I'm still cooking. So how long after you guys got married, you got your first child? Two years after Kevin was born in 1982. Mm hmm um, well, that was a turning part in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I was look, so looking forward for from, from my child. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I should tell you, when the baby body had a problem with his legs. Yeah, his leg was deformed. Deformed, and mm -hmm. I remember I cried like a baby. You was a big man? Yes, I cried like a baby. I remember I was working at the Mona Rehab Center. Mm -hmm. And... Professor John Golden, that's my golden father. Yes. And I cried from Mona Rehab straight into his office. Mm. And he said, Donald, why are you crying? I tell him about the baby. And I remember he said to me, of all the things that would have more to a child, something wrong with, with his legs and you're crying like that. Mm -hmm. I would look inside me, he, he, he could have a heart problem, he could have a mental deficiency, mm -hmm. a Down syndrome, a heart mm -hmm. looking. And that's what he said to me, of all the things that could have to a child, something wrong with his leg. And he went, put me in his car, that time he drove a Jaguar, mm -hmm. take me right up to the ward and he began to work on the baby from that day. Mm -hmm. So, it was very rough. Mm -hmm. But afterward I realized that cannot change. Mm -hmm. So I sucked so it. He accepted the fact. I accepted the fact and I set it down to give him the best life that I could possibly get. Mm -hmm. So how was it growing up growing him up as a young young um child? Um you had to carry him oh, Lord. At some of the times because his legs not working. If he came up and tell me he was around seven year old. Mm. When I take him to school, uh, I uh, started to make a reason for him to stay at the Monorail Rehab Center until weekend because mm -hmm. it started to get difficult to take a bus with him mm -hmm. right there's a music and I wouldn't go up on my back mm -hmm. so up until around seven he will have left right to my chest so he would stay at the morning rehab center until friday mm -hmm. after when friday even come nothing keep, couldn't keep him there yes so i would have to take something go to pop in sometime when i reach and that during the peak of us now Sometimes I have to push him through the bus window. Yeah, make him get in. Make him get in. And, and then, then you can come in. It, it was very difficult. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Very difficult as far as transportation wise. Mm -hmm. But we survived it. He was a, he was a nice baby. Mm -hmm. And then it was very difficult. But then he passes, passes the exam for Calabar. Mm -hmm. That was another That's thing. That's who you used to take him to before he passed. Oh, Bali experimental. Mm -hmm. That's how Bali. Oh, Bali. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So he would stay until the weekend. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a problem to get him to school as long as he was there. He just used a wheelchair and, you know, the school is designed mm -hmm. for the ramps and the rear. So that was a problem as long as he was there. But I have to take him home in a weekend now. Mm -hmm. And he does pain me out even in the week to leave him up there. Mm -hmm. But that the choice I had to make. So he eventually had another son two years two after year the first up. one was born. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was going through your mind when, when he was on the way? Say, lot of oh, one day this one is going to be same or have another problem. You can't say that again. I remember when that one was born, I went to look for Nama. Mm -hmm. and I asked where That's is, your wife? Yeah, mm -hmm. I asked where is the baby. So he was on the ward. Mm -hmm. He was in an incubator. Yes. Um, and I went straight there and the first place I look. Mm -hmm. This is like, <laughs> you can't just imagine. How would I look this year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it, it looked normal. It looked normal, but not thinking that something else could, could be wrong. wrong. <laughs> could have a heart problem, as you said before. Right, mm -hmm. you, know. you can't see that. But God has been good. Yeah, it's been a journey. I have no regret. Mm -hmm. Shevin has made me, both of them has made me proud. Mm -hmm. Shevin has made me exceptionally proud. Mm -hmm. uh, so how is it growing up, the, the both of them now? Because one you said that is still up by the school, the school mm -hmm. for the week. Both of them used to go to the same school. Okay, there. both went to the but same one school. Would, one come home in the evening with mm -hmm. because I used to work up there too. Mm -hmm. So one would come home in the evening with him and he would have to stay until the weekend. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so did he miss his brother and all of those definitely things? Definitely miss his brother and miss his home. Mm -hmm. But he looked forward for the weekend to come home. Mm -hmm. So uh, when they come home on weekends, did you like... um? Go different places with them, or they just basically stay home? Well, um, different places, um, when we could afford it. Mm -hmm. I guess also when I started working on the port now, mm -hmm. I could take them out, I could charter a taxi, and we could go places. Mm -hmm. Um, we go to all hotel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, like a weekend, and I remember the first time. I took me after 23 years of marriage, mm -hmm. I really wanted to take a somewhere special mm -hmm. and I couldn't do that until I get the work at the wharf. So mm -hmm. after 23 years of my takeoff, I remember taking out the breezes mm -hmm. in a way be. And, uh, and I say all of the food and everything, all the my mind was the two boys. Yes. <laughs> and oh, they me, weren't there? No, no. So we left them? Uh, I, I they were right. old enough to take care of them? So I, left the, I don't remember what I left. But they were good sized boys, you know. They were mm -hmm. going to church and all that. Oh, so they could have probably yeah, stayed yeah, for the weekend I, I until they come I, back. I think I had somebody to yeah, give an eye on yeah. them. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, my, every time I see the food, so they had a here now. After Kevin left, got his first job, mm -hmm. he decides uh, he can pay for a room. Mm -hmm. So I decided I'm going to pay for a room. Yes. For the other one. Yes. And we both went to Braco. Braco and Strilla. So the whole family got this, one, this trip. That was such a joy, you know. Mm -hmm. that was, uh, I'm big on family. I love my two boys. Mm -hmm. I love my wife. And I love my two boys. I do anything for them, anything that is humanly possible. Mm -hmm. And I do they are adult now, they are their own. Still pine after them for take up the phone and check WhatsApp. Uh -huh. I do I see I see at nine o'clock they were on WhatsApp and then twelve o'clock we were up when I see no movement. Uh -huh. Give them a call, find out if they are right. Uh -huh. So So um when you were growing them up, is the, is it is did you go run into anybody who probably never really understand the whole situation with, with Kevin and and make um yeah. very Kevin rude and remarks and yeah, things. Um, Give us some of those examples. Growing up most of the time his two legs were in bandage. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm not sure that we have to take him to university hospital mm -hmm. to get the bandage cut off mm -hmm. and press again. And people would maybe just say, well, how come you don't make the picnic two foot rock? Mm. <laughs> And he, as human beings, when, when I see the kids, they who born of them in the yard playing and running up and down and 
I also feel all the cool. Uh -huh. But then again, he was such an active child. He, anything the boys and the girls play, he did it. Mm -hmm. Up, Scott, Dan, the Shandy, oh, everything. He, mm -hmm. he, he, he was got all, involved. Yeah, got involved. Never fall up and feel himself. He always have a positive attitude. Mm -hmm. And he grew up with that positive attitude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they eventually um, got... Um, old as adults now and they, they moved out how was that experience now when we are now gone well, and your you and your wife is now alone together and thing it's a place it's get lonely not really no it's all this benefits mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all this benefit mm -hmm. but uh wish them up because when Kevin got married mm -hmm. he, he, uh, he lived in our apartment just next door mm -hmm. and then when he left to where he's living now his brother Take the apartment and got married and was yeah. living there. Too. So even though they had moved out, they were still a little, yeah, yeah. you know, not too far yeah, away. Too far. And even now, they mm -hmm. are not too far. But mm -hmm. all each other, we see each other regular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is is there anything that you you wish you could have done differently looking over your life, probably um if you had got a skill as you said, or yeah, um, went further in uh, school or something? Our parents were very poor and they never really big on education, so mm -hmm. you have to leave the country, come to Tina and try and make it on your own. Mm -hmm. And maybe I could have tried other things, but I have no regrets. Mm -hmm. I have no regrets. Life is what it is. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. So, for example, for persons who really don't know you, how would you describe yourself to somebody? Well, <laughs> I have very jovial, I have a good sense of humor. Mm -hmm. I'd love to laugh. Mm -hmm. As a matter of a couple of years, I, would, I used to be a very, I was a party animal. Mm -hmm. I love to party, I used to love to go to show. Mm -hmm. I could sing every song that was number one. So what, say, what type of party you used to go? Them time you weren't going to church? No, man, no, man. Okay. No, man. Before I started church, I mm -hmm. love to go party. So yeah, the friends that you go out with are easy alone. No, my right friends. Friends and you link I, up and go out. I, I used to, in the country we have a youth club. Mm -hmm. So we used to go to go places, have parties, have liquor drinks and all of that. Mm -hmm. yes. When I come to town, I uh, you never know, love town party because I used to skate, but I used to go to plenty of movies. You know, movies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us two things about yourself that most people wouldn't know about you? Well, I love to sing. What? I love to sing. Mm -hmm. And I love to dance. Love to sing and you love to dance. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you get you think you got that from yeah. I funny it is I'm I am i do not tell my father and my mother were set foot in a dancer. Mm. My brothers them neither the other till we grew up in the church. Mm -hmm. Uh, we literally live in the church, and my, my, my uncle was the pastor, uh -huh. and my daddy had the deacon. Okay. We literally lived in the church, and then the time that we couldn't pick up a card pack. Uh -huh. uh, you know, you see people playing dominoes, and you see church brother playing dominoes. Uh -huh. When we were small, my father said that as gambling. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. so your father was a deacon, actually. Yeah, yeah, my father was a deacon, and my uncle was the pastor, the Glen Garf United Pentecostal Church. Uh -huh. So that's where my roots is. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So from a little boy, I used to come with them to convention. Uh -huh. So, but I never really bought that. I wanted to get that tears off. Yeah. You know? So how did how did your father feel seeing that he was a minister and you were not really into the, the Christianity yeah, thing right. for a while? The, the, the thing I love about my parents, they didn't force any of us to baptize. Mm -hmm. We they waited on us to make our one decision. Mm -hmm. We knew the we knew that my uncle was like the Treat like the children are from the pump in your year or usual. Mm -hmm. The Lord, oh God, is one God, and you're there that morning, you know that. So, we basically, we have mm -hmm. doctrine partner, and we say sooner or later, all of my brothers, most of my brothers and sisters, they were start going to baptize before me. I wanted to get a taste mm -hmm. of what's out there. Mm -hmm. Wanted to explore my option and all of that. Experience so, life for you yourself. Right, and so. I knew one day. Mm -hmm. I was, it would be church, and yes. it would happen 1977 mm -hmm. at Penta. Okay. Mm -hmm. You mentioned earlier that you do a little cooking. What one of your favorite meals to prepare? I love to cook. I look for 
cook, cook, cook. I love to 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 cook. I the phone, thank God for Facebook social media. So you're on social media and things. Yeah. So you find any of your old friends that... that oh, you can answer that again, a lot of them. As a matter of fact, I had a girlfriend before I met her. Mm-hmm. And 40 years, mm-hmm. I could I always wonder what I'm to her. Mm-hmm. And I find her on Facebook. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's a good way to link yeah, up with old friends and things. Years, um, the last time I saw her was 1978 mm-hmm. when I took Norma to meet my parents in the country. Mm-hmm. And I saw her and I never saw her again till 2017. Mm-hmm. And it's through Facebook we link up. Mm-hmm. And we still curse, man. Mm-hmm. Still curse, man. Okay. So it, it, it is good and it's bad. Mm. Have, you, have you ever been to any countries outside of Jamaica? America. America? Yes, America. How was that, that trip, that first trip going overseas? It was exciting. Uh, but the only place I go is Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only state we've been to. Mm-hmm. Most of my sisters and brothers and mm-hmm. nieces and nigger, mm-hmm. they are in Florida. Mm-hmm. So when we take that trip, it's Florida. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you weren't scared going on the plane? No, it was... well, for the first time, it was a little scary. Mm-hmm. But after I go up and second, I, I don't like to scare the first time. Mm-hmm. But, uh, so you have any grandchildren currently? How much grandchildren you have? And tell us their names. Kavia, my first granddaughter. Mm-hmm. Carlis, my second granddaughter. And then... Mm-hmm. Quentin, my only grandson. How oh, you spell that name? I spell it again now. <laughs> it starts with a Q. Oh, Quentin? Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. Quentin, as I spell K W. Okay, oh. okay. Mm-hmm. so you, you have a lot of fun times with your grandchildren. Yeah, I, love, right? I love to be around them. I love to be around them. Mm-hmm. Make my day when they, even though when, they, when them phone, when them come, mm-hmm. they're mostly on the on them phone. Uh, but you know, I love to be around. Even in the, their presence. Yeah. You know, you know it. Yeah, man. Okay. Yeah, well, thank you, Mr. Powell, for sharing with us. Before you go, could you just share a final word of encouragement with our viewers? Um, probably, you know, you might have parents who have children who are born with a physical disability. Also, you growing up as a f- in the farming community and not having much exposure in terms of opportunity and jobs, but they still push mm-hmm. through and overcome all the odds. So share your final words. Yes, if you have a child with a disability, just love it, you can never tell. How about this experience of growing up my son with a disability, and it made me so proud. Mm-hmm. Um, love your wife, take care of your partner, mm-hmm. and just be a good husband mm-hmm. and a good father. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so there you have it, Mr. Trevor. No, it's Donald George Powell. I don't know why I'm calling I know somebody named Trevor yeah, Powell. Trevor Powell. Probably I need to interview him <laughs> as well. But this is Mr. Donald George Powell. He shared his journey with us. So until next time, when you join us for another interesting interview, we're asking you all to just keep safe.